This is TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And the State of the Saints podcast is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Over 2 million men worldwide choose Manscaped for all their below the waist needs. For those that love the Lawnmower 3.0, well, I got news for you. The Manscaped engineering team has confirmed that they have successfully created the Lawnmower 4.0. The Lawnmower 4.0 gives you the ability to turn the 4000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. The new trimmer even allows you to customize your trim all through additional guards lengths, sizes 1 through 4. And looks wise, it's sleek with a two-tone matte and gloss finish, even features a hot foil stamp, black chrome Manscaped logo. Show your more off loud and proud. Go to manscaped.com, use the promo code STATE OF SAINTS, and you will save 20% off of the lawnmower 4.0, as well as other Manscaped items. That's manscaped.com. All right. Julio. I got you. This is your favorite uncle. What's going on, bro? Man, Man, look, you want to go to the Cowboys, Julio, or you want to stay in Atlanta? Oh, man, no, I'm out of there, man. You out of there? He's out of there. Are you going? Ideally, where would you like to go? Uh, Right now, I'm just, I want to win. Okay. Julio, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling me back. We on air, but I appreciate you calling me, dog. (laughs) What's going on with that nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And uh, thank you all so much. Uh, Excuse me real quick as I eat me a popcorn chicken. Thank you so much for being a part of the State of the Saints podcast. Where we talk to all the saints. On this edition of the State of the Saints podcast. We're going to be talking about the Saints starting their voluntary team workout. We're also going to be talking about... (laughs) We're going to be talking about the Atlanta Falcons and how star wide receiver, arguably one of the greatest Atlanta Falcon of all time, Julio Jones, wants out of the Falcons organization. But I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Ah, drink a little water. Because I got a lot to say here on the State of the Saints podcast. I got a lot to say. Okay. Now, I got my sunglasses on here today because a lot of people may think <laughs> that I'm about to throw a lot of shade. All right. And these sunglasses are helping me, okay? But let's just go ahead and get into it, man. Before I even start about the Saints, let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room. Let's talk about Julio Jones. Let's talk about how Julio Jones 
went on national television. Well, not going on national television, but he knew he was going to be on national television. And he said out of his own mouth that the Atlanta Falcons and Julio Jones will no longer be together. He says that he wants out. O-U-T, out of Atlanta. Now, Atlanta, I've been telling y'all for years. I've been telling you, Atlanta Falcon fans, I've been telling you, nobody is checking for you all. The only reason why the Atlanta Falcons have been in the land of relevancy is because they play the New Orleans Saints. Julio Jones, arguably the greatest Atlanta Falcon of all time, knows exactly what I have been telling you all for years. Since 2018, I've been telling you all that you all, have been structuring your team around facing the New Orleans Saints every single year. And yet, to find a way to fix the most important thing that you all have been missing for years, and that is a defense. You all could not stop traffic with a stop sign. Okay? You you all defense sucked. You all... Go out here and you see the offensive firepower to do all the same so you get offensive player after offensive player after offensive player. And you whiff, whiff, whiff on defense. All you want to do is keep up points, but you can't stop nobody. And Julio Jones, going into his 11th season, is telling everybody that he cannot win in Atlanta. So that is why I come on here. People say, man, man, you ain't number the Saints fan. You ain't number the Saints fan, TJ. You ain't number the Saints fan. That is the reason why I've been telling Atlanta Falcon fans, they can't tell me nothing. You all can't tell me nothing. A bunch of casual fans, a bunch of casual fans who only cheer and only care when your team is relevant. Don't root for your team during the hard times. You'd you rather go to your stadium and go to your little mall and eat at your little restaurants than actually cheer for your team. You all aren't going anywhere. You can score as many points as you want to. You can score 40, 50 points. You can get Kyle Pitts and you can get Mike Davis and all these other cats that y'all can get all you want to offensively. But defensively, you suck. And you're not winning nothing. And Julio, who understood that I still got a little left in the tank, I can go out here and find me a team and I can go out here and win some football games and possibly play for a Super Bowl championship because he realizes that he is not going to do it in Atlanta. Count Chocula, a.k.a. Arthur Blank, only cares about that stadium, putting behinds in seats, and all of a sudden just about the attraction of a high-powered offense. Dude don't care nothing about no winning. Dude don't care nothing about no Super Bowl. As long as he got the ambiance of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, and as long as you are coming there, dressing all cute, looking all cute, rather go out here to try to holler at a dude or or try to holler at a chick instead of cheering for your team, he don't care because the money is already in the bank. You know the difference between a Saints fan and a Falcon fan? Good, bad, or indifferent. We're going to root for our team. Good, bad, and different. We're going to call it like it is. You all care so much about the New Orleans Saints and what we think about you. Then what you think about your own team? Atlanta, nobody checking for y'all. And if this doesn't prove, if this does not prove that nobody checking for y'all, I don't know what will. This is the greatest Atlanta Falcon probably next to uh, Deion Sanders that y'all ever had. And this dude don't want nothing to do with y'all. Don't tell me nothing. Until y'all actually get a defense. Until y'all actually stop somebody. Until y'all actually show that y'all can actually sustain a lead. Don't tell me nothing. And miss me with that whole overall championship. uh, I mean, that overall record thing. Because that's all y'all got to hold on to. That's all y'all have. Y'all boys are a bunch of clowns. Absolute clowns 
Atlanta Falcon fans cannot tell me nothing because y'all only start barking when y'all start winning. I don't see people saying I'm still saying rise up. I don't still I don't see people talking about I still rep that red and black. I don't see none of that. The Atlanta Falcons have been having an identity crisis for I don't know how long. You structure your team around what other people are doing. You finally get yourself a credible GM and Taryn Fotno, which y'all got from the New Orleans Saints. So that's another reason why y'all can't tell a Saints fan nothing. Y'all actually digging in the crates and trying to find people from the same organization. Y'all so-called hate. So if we are that bad, if we are that terrible, why are y'all picking from the New Orleans Saints? Once again, you all would not be relevant. If it wasn't for the New Orleans Saints, if the Falcons weren't going up against the legendary Drew Brees every single year, nobody would care about you all. You all have the reputation of being the biggest choke artist in NFL history. And not only did y'all prove it in the Super Bowl, but y'all proved it for three weeks straight last season. And yet again, the greatest Atlanta Falcon of all time says that he doesn't want anything to do with you all. So Atlanta Falcon fans everywhere, the red and black, We all talk about rising up. That's cool. But y'all can't say a damn thing to a Saints fan like me and everybody here. Julio Jones wants out of Atlanta. But I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of Saints podcast. You know, I I really do appreciate that. Thank you all so much. And uh, I just have to say that before we even get started, because Atlanta Y'all should be, y'all should feel bad. I see people talking about they want to burn their Julio Jones jerseys. No, 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 no. Because y'all brought it on yourself. Y'all brought it on yourself because y'all so fair weather that y'all don't hold your organization accountable. Y'all just sit there and accept mediocrity. And as long as y'all sitting up there possibly winning against the Saints by a field goal where y'all can go up here and talk and chat on rooms like this and and, pe- and podcasts like this and, and talk and chat a little bit. Oh, we beat y'all. We beat y'all. That's cool. But guess what, man? Not only do New Orleans Saints fans want to beat y'all, we want to beat the, the we want to be Seattle. We want to beat Dallas. We want to beat Carolina. We want to beat the Bucks. Nobody cares that y'all think that this is your Super Bowl. We pass all that. You know why the State of the Saints podcast is one of the best podcasts out there because we can have great shows and we don't even have to talk about you clowns. You know, some clown probably saying this because they see Julio Jones in, 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 as the topic. Man, y'all, y'all always talking about the Falcons. Hell no. Nah. I can count how many times on one hand in 708 episodes I've talked about the Atlanta Falcons. Nobody cares about you all at all. You all brought this on yourself. Accepting mediocrity has brought you to this point. As long as y'all beating the Saints, y'all cool. As long as y'all control the Saints, y'all cool. That ought to tell you everything you need to know on your social media page. Your social media page pays more attention about trolling the Saints than they actually tell you about giving you information about people they've signed, information that you actually need. That's pathetic, man. But y'all owe it to you. I mean, you you, you have nobody to blame but yourselves. Holding a team accountable is the key. I don't hear Atlanta Falcon fans holding their team accountable. I hear a whole bunch of excuses. Man, Matt Ryan this. Man, Ryan one of the all-time greats. Man, man, man. Y'all, y'all, look at the numbers. Who cares about numbers at the end of the day? Who cares? You know what? Drew Brees threw for 80,000 yards in his career, but I would... I would take all that back if he can have about two more Super Bowls. He can have, they, you can have them records. But see, that's the way y'all think. And that's the reason why Arthur Blanken can pe- keep on parading nonsense out here for y'all. Because he knows. He knows y'all don't hold him accountable. Count Chocula, a.k.a. Arthur Blank, knows that y'all don't hold him accountable. Who the hell goes out there Who in the hell goes out there knowing that you need defense and steady focus on trying to bring offense to your team? You all had one of the best best offenses in football last season. You spend no time on defense. 
but y'all okay with that. But burn a Julio Jones jersey. Burn it. I'm going to burn a Julio Jones. Julio Jones dead to me. No, 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 no. Julio Jones is doing what Julio Jones needs to do because he understands that you all have done absolutely nothing. Nothing to improve your team. But when a Saints fan say that, oh, we hating, we hating. Look at the overall record. We still got the best record over y'all. Well, 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 well y'all ain't going to be nothing with Drew Brees. Miss me with that, man. Miss me with that. But let me go to the comments, man. Go. Let me, I, I just spent enough time on these clowns. Let me see what y'all got to say about these clowns. Oh, yeah, man. Before I get started with the comments, I want to let everybody know, man, uh, the State of the Saints podcast, those that purchased the State of the Saints podcast T-shirts, uh, I shipped them off today, okay? So you should be getting your uh, shirts this week. Thank you to everybody that, that purchased the T-shirt. And there's still some T-shirts available, man. If you want to purchase a State of the Saints podcast T-shirt, feel free to do so. Uh, you can purchase them uh, via Cash App. Uh, you can use this, dollar sign State of Saints. You, what I need you to do is send me your name, your address, and your shirt size. We have colors white and we have colors gray so still got a few shirts left uh please support the state of the saints podcast and purchase uh state of the saints podcast t-shirt i would really appreciate that if you did some falcon fans thank you very much for the two dollars says we flaky as hell most of us ain't even from georgia good point good point tyra says they forever worrying about us all the time even when we're not playing them they forever worried about us. And see, that's the, re- that's the reason why a Falcon fan can't tell me anything. You know, that's the reason why. That's the reason why a Falcon fan can't say anything uh, to me at all. Okay, that's the reason why. Because they spend most of their time focused on the New Orleans Saints. And they, they, they do not want to admit it. But they hitched their wagon to the New Orleans Saints. Over the last 15 years, as long as Drew Brees has been here, that's the reason why. That's the reason why they've been on television. It's very rare that the Atlanta Falcons are on television because of the Atlanta Falcons themselves. It's always about who they're playing against. Like if they're on a, if they're on television versus the Packers, it's because they're playing Aaron Rodgers. It's not because everybody wants to see Matt Ryan. It's not because everybody wants to see the Falcons. Because since they lost that Super Bowl, people look at them as an absolute joke. They look at them as an absolute joke. And – Bro, Julio just wanted out. That, if that don't tell you everything you need to know, I don't know what will. This is my favorite TJ podcast so far. John, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it, and thank you for being here. Uh, I have ever seen. Uh, Tyra says 52 to 50. We're about to sweep them again and tie uh, that up, and then we're going to take the lead on that ass next year, baby. Who that? Look, I, I don't care about overall record anymore. I don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the kind of stuff they do to try to stay relevant because they don't have a, a leg to stand on. They can't talk about Super Bowls. They can't talk about championships. They can't talk about wins. They can't – I mean, they only can talk about wins. They can't talk about uh, coaching. They can't talk about any of those things. They have had three head coaching changes to the New Orleans Saints one in the last 15 years. So what can they possibly say? You know, they, they can't say that the Saints uh, is a bad organization because if that's the case, then why are you pulling from the Saints organization to try to fix your own organization? Not only did you try to get Terry Fontenot, but you tried to get the accountant Kyle Harley to go there too. And so the Saints actually had to pull ranks and they gave him a little bit of a, a, a salary boost. So you can't say that the Saints have a bad organization because if that's the case, then why are you taking from the New Orleans Saints? Why are you taking from the front office? Why are you trying to pilfer and trying to recreate and restructure what the Saints have done? That's all I'm saying. If if you are that team, if the Saints are beneath you all, if the Saints are as good as you all, then why are you stealing from the Saints? Why you can't go out here and try to find your own game plan? Why you can't go out there and find your own uh, your own structure that works? Somebody tell me that. If I'm an originator and I'm an innovator and all that kind of stuff, you think I'm looking at somebody else and trying to figure out what they're doing so I can steal and try to bite from that? Hell's to the no. Hell's to the no. What can a Falcon fan tell you today? I'm serious. What what can a Falcon fan tell you today? 
I'm being dead serious, man. We having a conversation. You know, I try to be as animated, but I'm just being real with my Who That Nation members and, and, and members of uh, different fan bases that probably just tuned in just to check out to see what I had to say about the, the Julio Jones situation. What can a Falcon fan say right now? This is the greatest Atlanta Falcon of all time. Imagine Drew Brees coming on. Like, imagine Shannon Sharp calling Drew Brees and Drew Brees saying, I want out of New Orleans. Imagine him calling Ricky Jackson back in the day. And Ricky Jackson said, I want out of New Orleans. Even though that was the case after, you know, he realized he couldn't win with him. Case in point, he knew he couldn't win with him. So what can they tell you? They can't tell me a damn thing. At all. At all, at all. I'm going to stroll down a little bit, folks. I'm going to stroll down. If uh, you don't hear your comment, go ahead and, um, and, and, re- and repost it. The acronym uh, lives on Atlanta, always left counting on next season. They can go 2-14 and 14 and not care as long as they beat the Saints losers. That's sad. You know, the thing about it is who that nation, and for those that have been following the New Orleans Saints about as long as I have, probably even longer, because a lot of you that, that check out the podcast much older than I am, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, You all know what the Saints used to be. The Saints used to be a terrible franchise. I don't sit up here and try to pretend. I don't pretend that the Saints were a, a great franchise all the time. They were a terrible franchise. But here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing that separates Saints fans from Falcon fans. Here's, here's the reality. When the New Orleans Saints used to lose, we used to have the same mind frame. I, so I'm not going to knock them for that. When the Saints were losing, as long as we beat the rivals, we were cool. But here's the difference. When the Saints start to win, when we realize that the Saints had a chance to make the playoff and the Saints had a chance to win the Super Bowl, our mind frame changed. I'm not okay with just 13 and 3 and making the playoffs. Back in the day, if the Saints were 13 and 3, I'm repping, I'm yelling from the rooftops. I'm happy. If they lose in the playoffs, I'm cool. But I'm ticked off if the Saints lose in the playoffs. I'm ticked off if the Saints don't go to the play, don't go, don't go to the Super Bowl. Here's the difference between Saints fans and Falcon fans. Falcon fans are still living like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Like they, you know, they, they are a snake bitten franchise and that sucks. And as long as they beat the Saints, that's cool. That's absolutely pathetic. About six years ago, you all were in the Super Bowl. The way that you should think about your team, the way that you should think about your franchise should change. When the Saints won the Super Bowl back in 2009, that became the standard. Not beating the Falcons. Not not beating the Panthers, not beating the Bucks. Who cares? I said I, I did an overall record prediction last week here on the State of the Saints podcast, and I came out here and I said I can care less what the Saints record is. I can care less if the Saints win the division. Why? Because the Saints for the last four years won the division. They proved that. So guess what? The bar has been lifted. The bar has changed. So why should I care? If you all in the Super Bowl six years ago, why are you still caring about just beating the Saints? Why don't you expect better out of your organization? Why don't you demand an adequate defense? Why don't you demand Arthur Blank? Why don't you hold this guy accountable? Why don't you hold Count Chocolate uh, accountable for setting your team back, allowing that GM Demistroff to constantly destroy your franchise by bringing offensive players in when y'all need a defense the whole entire time? So that's the difference between a Saints fan and a Falcon fan. To me, y'all still living like it's 92 when Deion Sanders and Andre Risen was here. Y'all boys that went to the Super Bowl twice and y'all still living like, oh, it's okay for us just to beat the Saints. Oh, as long as we beat y'all. Man, please, I would never come on this podcast and say as long as we beat the Falcons. Not only do I want to beat the Falcons, I want to beat every damn body the Saints face as a fan. I can care less about trolling you all every day. I can care less about what our social media page says about a Falcon fan. I want to win a championship. Man, I wish I would, man, be on this podcast and the Saints went losing eight straight games or nine straight games. I'm sitting up here waiting for a Falcon game. Man, miss me with that nonsense. Miss me with that. You got to be kidding. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you're still sitting up here talking about the New Orleans Saints and as long as we beat the New Orleans Saints, you are pathetic as a fan. 
Seriously. This, this is this is sad stuff right here, man. This is sad stuff. I have a Falcon fan at work, and all he talks about is we're not going anywhere because uh, Breeze retired, and I've told him we know uh, how to win without him. Mighty Mouse, thank you very much for the $5 also being a supporter. Here's the reality. Here's the reality, folks. Anybody that's talking like that as a as a Falcon fan, they don't know football. Here's, here's the reality. A lot of Falcon fans don't know nothing about football because they're so damn casual. They're so damn casual. Like a lot of them, like anybody that stays in Atlanta knows that Atlanta is a melting pot. You got people from all over the country go to Atlanta. I got friends that stay in Atlanta right now. They go to Atlanta to to catch the, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the American dream, so to speak. You got Tyler Perry Studios out there. You got a lot of, uh, you know, as African-Americans, they got a lot of African-American restaurants, entrepreneurships out there, opportunities to uplift, you know what I'm saying, uplift yourself and empower yourself and become a, a, a capitalist or whatever like that. So a lot of people go into Atlanta. So with that, you got people from New York, you got people from Louisiana, you got people from Texas, you got people from the Midwest, you got people from the West Coast, all coming to Atlanta. But guess what comes with that? It comes with people bringing their fandom from other places. It comes from, you know, people, if they're from New York, coming being a Giants or a Jets fan. So a lot of these people out there, they're very casual. They're very casual fans. You might, you got some real fans out there. You got some fans that have been repping Atlanta for a long time. But a lot of them fans are casuals. They they give, they want you to give them a reason to cheer. It's almost like what Vegas is trying to deal with right now. That's the reason why they're trying to create this club inside of the end zone. Because Vegas, the Raiders I'm talking about, have to compete with the Las Vegas Strip. All this stuff that's going on in Atlanta, the Falcons got to compete with everything that's going on in Atlanta, the nightlife, Right? And all the other stuff that's going on in Atlanta. So that's the reason why. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the difference between a Saint fan and a Falcon fan to me. And a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, they're casual. So they don't know that much about football. They don't, they, they don't care that much about the New Orleans Saints for them to follow the team. They listen to Undisputed. They listen to First Take. They listen to First Thing First and all these other uh, shows out here to tell them what they need to know about the Saints. And they go there and they regurgitate it and tell you that. They run, they, they, they got that run, tell that type mentality. Oh, y'all, nothing without Breeze. Well, I mean, look, if, if we were nothing without Breeze, then what the hell Taysom Hill doing beating y'all twice? If they're nothing without Drew Breeze, then why, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all. I don't understand it. I I really don't. If there's nothing without Drew Brees in the last two years, Drew Brees hasn't played, the Saints still been whooping y'all. But see, that's what casual fans tell you. That's when I know people don't really follow football when they start telling me stuff that they hear. And and they say it verbatim. So I understand that. And I watch my fair share of sports shows. I do. So I know when somebody just telling me some nonsense. I know it. So fingers 12, TJ, like I always say, it's so nice to have a uh, free real estate in somebody's head. They are a group who love just enough while uh, we want it all. Yeah. That, that's just what it is. Crazy how they be talking about us, but they want to be us. They want our player stadium and coaching staff. They, they want everything. Look, they know the winning formula, man. They, they, look, they know the breaks. Yeah, Atlanta Falcon fans, they know if you peel back, if you peel back the layers, you'll actually see what's actually going on here. You'll see it. You will see what's actually going on here. I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you, Atlanta. I know they got some Falcon fans up here probably just saying, man, you hating. Hey, man, you hating, you hating, you hating. Please. The Saints have been the best team in the league for the last six years, even without a Lombardi. The Super Bowl won't hold weight with me until it becomes a best of three series. Saints are one of the best teams in the league. No doubt about that, Josh. They are one of the best teams in the league. But here's the thing. Nobody cares if you ain't got that hardware. Nobody cares if you ain't got that hardware. 
If you don't have that hardware, then nobody really cares about what you're doing. It's just as simple as that. And Julio is a quiet guy. He don't speak on too much, but got him to bluntly say he wants out. Say a lot about how he feels about the organization. Like I said, man, look, when we sit up here and we talk about this organization, I mean, I look, do I do I despise the Falcons? Yeah. Do I want them to lose? Yes. But am I am I objective? Can, do I look at what they're going through objectively? Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been saying this for years. They don't have a defense. They can't stop anybody. They have an offense. That's all. Look, that's all they did. All they do. I don't care what anybody says. A Falcon fan can can talk all they want to. They can get mad. They can poke their lip out. Here's the facts. The Atlanta Falcons build their team around the New Orleans Saints. If the Saints go out here and they get a bunch of wide receivers, if the Saints got three good wide receivers, the, the Falcons going to try to get four. If the Saints go out there and they get a, a running back who can catch the ball out of the backfield, guess what? They're going to do the same thing. If the Saints run a certain offense, the Atlanta Falcons going to be trying to do the same thing. It's just what it is. I ain't never seen the New Orleans Saints, as long as Sean Payton has been here, build their team and structure their team around what the Falcons are doing. That, that I mean, that's just the truth, man. That's just the truth. Go, I mean, go, go and take a look. Go and take a look at how the Falcons structure their team. When the Saints were a high-powered offense, when they had Devery Henderson and Robert Meacham and, and, you know what I'm saying, and all these other guys out there, and they had Willie Sneed or Lance Moore, guess what, guess what the Falcons did? They went out there and they got – they already had Roddy White. Then they went go get Julio. Then they went go get Tony Gonzalez. And they got all these different guys out there so they can match the firepower of the Saints. But as the Saints were trying to add defensively, all the thing they were trying to do was trying to go toe-to-toe with the Saints offensively. All Arthur Blank cares about until he actually changed my mind. The only thing Arthur Blank actually cares about is people in the stands. He understands what this is. The NFL is entertainment. That's the reason why they have all these different rule changes and stuff like that to try to put behinds in seats, let the offense reign supreme, let the defense be behind the eight ball so the offense can score a bunch of points, so it can generate excitement, down to the wire type games. How else can you how else can you explain a team who who was ranked in the bottom of the barrel in defense last season? You go out here and get a tight end. You go out here and get a tight end. Seriously? You can't you you can't generate no pass rush. The dude that you spent the number one pick on, on a couple of years ago, he's not even with the team no more in Tag McKinley. But you're so focused on offensive firepower. I just don't get it. I don't get it, folks. Maybe y'all do, but I hell, I sure as hell don't. Only record, one Super Bowl to zero. Saints fans uh, expect to be in the postseason. Falcons celebrate if they don't finish fourth in the division. Exactly. Got to change. You got to change your mind frame. Let's be real here. Falcons fans aim low with their expectations every year. Let, Bobby, I don't even think they know what their expectations are because they're so damn casual. You know, like, this is the thing, man. I'm all for, like, going on. I'm going to tell y'all, isn't it, I, go, I don't go on Falcon fans' podcasts a lot. I'm going to tell you why. I get invitations to go on the shows. I do. But you know why I don't go? Because they don't know how to talk football. The only thing they want to do is go back and, and back and forth with the troll job. Anybody podcast I go on, I try to take a look at it. I ain't trying to sit up here and talk about the troll job. Come in and tell me some stuff that needs to be said. Tell me some stuff that you feel can help elevate your squad. I don't care about, look, honestly, it's all fun and games, 28 to 3, this, that, and the third. But tell me why you feel like your team is just superiorly better than the New Orleans Saints. Because I can tell you why the New Orleans Saints are superiorly better than the Falcons. And I don't even have to bring up 28 to 3. If Falcon fans start talking about Drew Brees and y'all ain't going to be nothing, that's just wishful thinking. Because no fan in their right frame of mind, no Falcon fan 
in a right frame of mind would think that they're superiorly better than New Orleans Saints. And the only thing they got to hold on to is their overall record. But I want to thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. And the State of the Saints podcast is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Uh, you all check out Manscaped.com. Use the promo code State of Saints and you will save 20% off of your purchase. And I want to thank Manscaped.com uh, for sending me uh, the lawnmower 4.0 uh, that's available right now. Manscaped.com. Use the promo code State of Saints. You'll save 20% off of the lawnmower 4.0 as well as other Manscaped items, okay? And there's free international shipping for all of my listeners uh, across the pine and around the world. Any word on how secondary is shaping up uh, um, post-expected uh, suspension? Haven't heard anything just yet. Uh, I'm assuming that they're going to try to find somebody, uh, you know, that can – you know, come out here, maybe like a seasoned veteran or something like that. I mean, it's still early. So training camp hasn't started yet. I'm pretty sure they're going to, uh, you know, find somebody. They are 200, uh, 283 things to talk about the Falcons. Exactly. Swag fans, swag fan, keep dreaming. Uh, easy to come up out of nowhere. I mean, easy to come up out here. Uh, let me see. Riz says Falcon fans can't spell football if it was standing there in their faces. Some of them can, but some of them can't. You know, some of them like, look, if you're going to, I'm going to tell everybody, look, just for all my podcast uh, people out there, just for all my people that are, you know, thinking about starting a podcast, you got aspirations. Look, you got to think about things objectively. I don't care if you're extremely passionate about the subject. You got to be objective. And sometimes, man, you're going to piss a lot of people off because of your objectivity. But what I don't, what I can't stand is people that are so much of a fan that they can't see the forest through the trees, that they can't see what reality is if it just slapped them right in the face. And, you know, you get a lot of those Falcon fans out there that, that, that do these shows and talk so emotionally that they can't see the forest through the trees. So when a Falcon fan is talking like that to me, I ain't nothing really you can say to me at all. That's the reason why if a Falcon fan is trolling me or talking about the Saints of, you know, another playoff debacle, it really don't bother me because I don't care. Because here's the, here's the thing. You didn't beat the Saints. So you're not in the playoffs. You haven't been there in quite some time. So you sit there and hope and pray and sweat and wish that another team knocks off the New Orleans Saints so you can feel good about yourself because misery loves company. You're so miserable because you know that the way that the Saints are structured and the way your team is structured, they're just superiorly better than your team. So the only thing that you can hope in is to wish that the New Orleans Saints get knocked off by somebody else. So with that, don't come at me. Don't come at me. Don't come at me and tell me about, oh, man, y'all, oh, ha, ha, ha. Especially if you're losing twice. Especially if you're getting swept in the series. Especially if the fact that the Saints have beaten y'all, what, six out of the last five times we played? I mean, five out of the last six? You, 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 you serious right now? You serious? Pack, are they serious? Yeah, right. Are they serious? I don't know. I don't know. What, what's going on here, man? What's that? Yeah. Pack, what's wrong with them, man? Got packing up in here. Come on, Peggy. Hold on, let me get my son. What is that? All right. right. We talking about them Falcons. Exactly, exactly, Peggy. Let's go back. Let's go to the comments. All right. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, That's a nice hat, TJ. Uh, Appreciate that. Appreciate that, man. Uh, I don't blame uh, Julio for warning out. Falcons are hot. Garbage. Back and say trash. Yes. Right. Exactly. Straight trash. Let me see. Been talking about Falcon fans. They are a terrible organization. Exactly. Exactly, Paxton. They, they're not very good, man. They're not. They're not a very good organization. That's the reason why they have to look for other. They have to look for other uh, organizations to try to mirror after. The fell bombs had two opportunities to win two reigns and got stomped by Elway and the Broncos 2016 against the Patriots. 
Oh, uh, well, we all know about that. It's called the <laughs> Epic Collapse 25. So what's up with Julio? Julio wants out, okay? And for all those people that of all those people that uh checked out uh the State of the Saints podcast a little bit uh late, here's what Julio Jones had to say uh about the Atlanta Falcons. All right. Julio. I got you. This is your favorite uncle. What's going on, bro? Man, that's the Man, look, you want to go to the Cowboys, Julio, or you want to stay in Atlanta? Oh, man, nah, I'm out of there, man. You He's out? out. There? He's out of there. Told you. Are you going? Ideally, where would you like to go? Uh, right now, I'm just, I want to win. Okay. Julio, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling me back. We on air, but I appreciate you calling me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was my response like right after man so oh man yeah he, he definitely wants out now some people are probably asking themselves where will julio end up um some people i see uh jeremiah here says he want um go to the ravens i wouldn't pick the ravens the reason why i want to say he will go to the ravens because i feel like he's going to have a huge drop off like no disrespect to lamar jackson but lamar jackson is a run first quarterback even though he can't throw the football and i think that would that would bother uh, Julio. I think that that would bother Julio Jones. I think that that would affect the way that he actually plays the game. So I can see him. Uh, I can see him out there in New England. Uh, trying to see where else I can see him. I can see him in New England. Um, I can see him in Green Bay. Uh, I can also see him. I can see him in Seattle as well. I can see him playing for the Seahawks. So those are a couple of places that I, I can think of. And what's so crazy that they lost to us with Taysom Hill as the quarterback. Exactly. Exactly. They lost with Taysom Hill as the quarterback. Mine? So that, that, that. <laughs> Mine. Mine. Go ahead, nephew. Hey, man, look, they're, they're not very good. They're not very good, Peggy. They're, they're not very good. What happened if he goes to the New Orleans Saints? I, I don't see that happening. I don't I don't see him going to to the New Orleans Saints. I can't see that happening. I can't see him going to the to the Saints. I, I really don't. Not that I, I just feel like he just disliked them so much. I just think that he wants to go somewhere else. But it depends on how much disdain he has for the organization that he played for. Uh let me see. Saints should at least try to trade for uh who? MT. Uh, who is MT? Who are we talking about here? Trade for Michael Thomas? What? <laughs> I don't. I would believe that. Oh, we ain't talking about Michael Thomas. Misery wants company. Greatest quote uh, and fact to us. Exactly. That's all they want, man. They want us to be as miserable as them. But that's the thing. That's why they. That's why they dislike Saints fans so much because they can't destroy. They can't destroy our will and our confidence and our love for the team. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, they, they can't. You want to get down now? Okay, let's get you now. Yeah, okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what they want. You know, they want to kill our will, and we, and we love the organization. You know, we love the organization so much, they can't, they can't destroy our will. They can't destroy our will. That's, that's the issue. You want one of these? You want a popcorn chicken? All right. I'm passing on some popcorn chicken there. So thank y'all, man. Thank y'all for being here. But let's go ahead. Man, let's talk about the Saints uh, workout, okay? Let's go ahead and talk about the workout of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, they had their voluntary workouts that started on today, and they had 87% attendance, okay? So 87% of the New Orleans Saints team showed up to the voluntary workouts, and and we know that the voluntary workouts was something that was a huge deal. It, it was a huge deal that, you know, you had guys that uh, were thinking about, you know, why should, you know, we have voluntary workouts. It was a big deal towards the beginning of this off season. And now you have 87%, you know, so that that's pretty good, man. Especially since you got some guys like Drew Brees, you know, who's no longer with the organization and stuff like that. Guys still taking upon themselves to actually show up and wants what's best for this organization. So I think that that's a good look. I think it's a good look that those guys showed up. Uh, of course, it's not going to be any outside activities or anything like that. It's mostly 
going to involve film study and, and, and weightlifting. So if the Saints have this type of participation, you as a Saints fan have to be extremely excited about this. And the reason why is, you don't get this type of uh, you, you don't get this type of turnout for voluntary workouts by many teams. Now you're still going to have guys that are not going to show up, which is you know the 13 percent got guys that probably want to sit out there and enjoy the rest of their vacation. They probably working out on their own and they just want to get themselves ready mentally and physically for training camp. But the fact that those guys actually showed up and they're actually uh, working hard to try to build, I think that that's absolutely wonderful, man. So. 87% turnout for this voluntary workout, 87%, you know, that that came out there to try to, you know, try to get this, uh, you know, try to get the best out of this team. So, it is, you know, I think that's really exciting. Uh, Mike T and Jones would be epic. Oh, Michael Thomas and Jones. Okay. Okay. You So, you're saying putting Michael Thomas and Julio Jones together. I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if the Saints going to be able to get him. I don't know if he will want to come to the Saints. I, I, I really don't. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to uh, get there or not. Hold on one second. All right. So uh, that was a typo. I mean, Julio. Okay, John. Yeah, I, I, I got what you're saying. Can the Ravens make uh, – let me see. Can the – can the Ravens make the it to the game if Julio came? Who would be the wideouts? Um, can they make it to the game? Are you saying make it to the Super Bowl? All I'm saying is this, man. I don't think that would be a good fit for Julio. I, I don't. I don't think that the Ravens would be a good fit. I don't think it would be a good fit for him. Um, the way that he runs routes, the way that he plays, I don't think that that would be a good fit. Uh, you know, I think that he needs to go somewhere where he has a quarterback Kind of similar to the skill set, you know, Matt Ryan, a pocket passer, you know, not not a not a quarterback that's, you know, a kind of a read option quarterback or, you know, run pass option. You know, I don't think that'll work for him. I think that he can work out in I think he can work out in Tennessee. That'll be a good play for him playing for the Titans. I can see him also uh, playing for the Seahawks. You know, that would be a good spot for him as well. You know, him alongside DK Metcalf, uh, man, that would man, that would be. Great. Him and Tyler Lockett as well, man, that would be that would be dangerous right there. I can also see him possibly, you know, playing for somewhere like the Eagles or even a Washington football team. Places like that. It really comes down, TJ, to what the money uh the money is right. Who gives him the best deal if it's New Orleans, Crisco, or uh, or Cisco or whatever. Okay, I'll say <laughs> Crisco. <laughs> oh man, but uh look, I don't look. I don't think it's about money at this point. I really don't. Like when guys start to like create a Hall of Fame type resume, when guys start to build up a you know what I'm saying a, a Hall of Fame type career, these guys want to win, man. And it, it don't matter about it don't matter about money at that particular point, especially when you've been making money your whole entire career like Julio has. Like Julio has made the big bucks. Julio has got the big contract. This guy's looking for this guy is looking for legacy now. So that's what he said. He want to win. So I believe that. Who do you see winning the wide running back number two position, the rookie running back from Indiana, Mirrors Latavius Murray? He's my pick. Uh, look, as long as Latavius Murray is on his team, Latavius Murray is going to be the number two running back, okay, because Latavius Murray uh, is a really good running back. So, no, I, unless the Saints are thinking about moving him, you know, if these other running backs come in, they play really well, and the Saints are like, man, we got something here. And they think they can use, you know, use uh, Latavius as some trade bait. Have at it. But as long as Latavius is here, Latavius is going to be uh, their number two running back. As long as Julio ain't in the NFC, I'm cool with. It. Like I said, I can see him going to the AFC. Yeah, I really do. I can see him playing for the Tennessee Titans. I can. You know, I, I don't think I can see him playing for the Jaguars because like I say he, he says he wants to win. OK, and even though the Jaguars have Urban Meyer, they still haven't proven anything that they can actually win. I can see Julio probably going to Buffalo. Mm. Trying to see. Well, it's, it's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, I can see Julio go to the Chargers. That would be a good spot to form, too. That would be a good spot. Him and Keenan Allen out there. Tennessee is trash. Uh, Tennessee is not trash. 
Tennessee is a, a good football team. They won the AFC championship last year and, you know, they, you know, lost in a wild card round this year, but they're, they're still a good football team and they're good enough. You know, I can see him, you know, him and Derrick Henry playing together. I mean, they work out together. They're friends. So why not? Uh, game of the week goes to Detroit, uh, become human, heavy rain beyond two souls. Okay. That's coming from Ramsey giving us the game of the week. Tennessee, Tennessee can be a really, a really good football team for Julio, especially when you have Derrick Henry. They set up the play action. Uh, Julio still got that speed to be able to get behind defenses and also be able to run Chris route. So I can see him in Tennessee. I think that would be a good spot for him. I really do. Uh, but the Saints with this all, uh, all season voluntary workouts, uh, I just think that that's a good look. That goes to show you that this team is on the same page. And they want to win, man. And they understand that, okay, we ain't got Drew anymore. And this is a team that don't want to take – they don't want to take it for granted, man. They want to make sure that they try to get as much as much reps and, and much uh, camaraderie as they possibly can. So, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know who, you know, the, the guys who didn't show up. I don't know if it was any star players or what. I'm pretty sure that they there were some star players that didn't show up. But, but still, man, I, I'm, I'm just glad to – I'm just glad to actually see that. I'm just glad to see that. Uh, let me read a few more, and then we're going to go ahead up out of here, man. Let's go to Angela says, there are, uh, there are nothing without, uh, I don't know what to say here. They're just nothing. Matty <laughs> Ice keeps melting under pressure, and his Julio leaves. Well, that's bad. Well, all I know is this. Julio is a really good wide receiver. I've seen in a game last season when he was dealing with a hamstring injury and he went out there, I think it was like a fourth and 15, right? And they needed to convert that fourth down. And this man caught that pass between two defenders, right? So to say that Julio Jones is, is not a difference maker, that would be, you know, that, that would be insane. Like this guy's still a difference maker when he plays. And then don't, don't make it seem like this guy doesn't care. The, I see fans of uh, the Atlanta Falcons. They getting mad and frustrated and stuff like that. This dude give his all every time he plays. This man was out there going in and out of the lineup with with a pull hamstring, tight hamstring, uh, in, knee injury. You know what I'm saying? He, he gave it his all. So I just feel like that's extremely sad uh, that you know Falcon fans like turning against this man like this. This man want to win. And if you're looking at your team objectively, you you cannot blame this dude. You can't. You can't. Bl- you cannot blame this dude for wanting to leave. You know, I, I mean, it's just what it is, folks. Like we be mad and stuff like that. That that got like this isn't like the Anthony Davis type situation to me. Anthony Davis just phoned it in. He just didn't care. Okay, he got he let them other boys get in his ear and oh man, you great and they just holding you back this, that, and the third and you know all that. You know, but with Julio, Julio gave us all, man. So yeah, I think there's a there's a, a difference. Okay, there's a difference between you phoning and in and leaving, but you giving it your all and just saying, man, this is an uphill, this an uphill climb, man. I ain't gonna be able to do it. It's almost like AJ Green, right? You know what I'm saying? AJ Green gave us all to Cincinnati. Gave us all. So how can a Cincinnati Bengals fan be mad at, at, at AJ Green for wanting to leave and don't want to sign with the team? Do want to win. That's what it comes down to. I like our defensive line, especially the defensive tackles. Who do you see starting along David Ayamata? Um, I say Shad Tuttle. Uh, rotation would be Malcolm Roach. And I can also see uh, Lorenzo Neal uh, Jr. being a part of that rotation as well. So, yeah. And we and also Peyton Turner can probably play inside and outside. But the, the start, I would say, is Shad Tuttle because of his experience and being with the team. So that, that's who I see as uh, the rotation. Mm, already read that already read that too scroll back up a little bit see what i missed we want to win uh more than one championship we want a dynasty absolutely we definitely want a dynasty you know i mean i just want to win i didn't want to win i don't care nothing about no division titles and none of that stuff no more that's just what it is charles says julio is going to the 49ers would be a good spot for him, you know, be a good spot for him. Trey Lance is out there. I can see him actually playing for him. I can see him playing. He do just want to go to a contender. 
49ers are a contender. Like they just had some they had some real bad injuries last season that cost them uh some games, but they still are a good football team. Roman says, uh, if we would draft like we drafted in 2017 instead of drafting backups since 2018, I believe we would have gotten us a trophy uh, by now without being over the cap. Uh, and we wouldn't be so needy. Uh, I don't think the Saints are needy. I don't. I think I think the Saints' uh, needs are basically like how we how we look at it. Uh, I don't think the Saints just really need it like that. I just think that we as fans, uh, we're just a little nervous. But this team has done a really good job in drafting players. And the thing about it is the Saints don't want to go back to what it was in 2015, 2016 when they had a really bad locker room. They want guys that are high character guys that, that can fit in within their locker room. And the Saints want to develop players. They want to turn these players into their own. You know, they want to make these players – uh, the type of players that they want them to be, uh, being professional, uh, being guys that they can count on, guys that can go out there and give their all. And I ain't got no problem with that. Okay, so, I, I mean, look, they probably thought, like, you think they drafted Marcus Davenport for him to be injured all the time? Absolutely not. Think they drafted Zach Barr because they felt like he wasn't going to be able to play? No. Think they drafted Adam Troutman because they felt like he wasn't going to be able to hit the field or like these, they want these guys to play, but at the same time, I think they believe in what these guys can do, and I think that the New Orleans Saints are are just trying to build themselves a roster with guys that have high character, and I have no problem with that at all. Okay, uh, but I want to say thank you all for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Thank you so much for being a part of the podcast. Those that made their comments, also just reminding everybody that the State of the Saints podcast T-shirts are available right now. Uh, you can go and uh, use uh, Cash App and you can use Dollar Sign State of Saints. Uh, you can purchase your State of the Saints podcast T-shirt. Still got some available. All I would need is your information, your name, your address, uh, your shirt sizes. Uh, we got it in colors white and gray. And thank you to all those that uh, that purchased the T-shirt. Um, also, man, uh, State of the Saints podcast brought to you by Manscaped.com, Manscaped.com. Use the promo code State of Saints. That's all one word, State of Saints, lowercase letters. And you'll save 20% off of your Manscaped purchase. They have some really good products. You got the uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 that's available right now. Uh, you know, th- th- this is a really good product. Uh, as well as the, the Weed Whacker Nose Trimmer that's, that's available as well. And no matter if you spend $100 or $10, you use the promo code State of Saints. Uh, you'll save 20% off. So thank you all so much. Uh, Previous episodes available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Anchor FM. Before you get up out of here, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Let everybody know that you enjoyed the podcast. If you have not already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com, search The State of the Saints Podcast, and on facebook.com, search The State of the Saints Podcast. And thank you all so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Till next time, all I got to say is, who that?